Aloha YouTube, this is your boy Crypto Roots, and I'm back at it again with Mo Crypto Game, just got back from my morning beach jog, I'm all sweaty and I'm feeling good, and I was like, you know what, you're feeling good, it's time to spit some crypto game. So, we about to spit some crypto game. Now, I gotta get the ads out the way, so hit me up for the crypto miner. Hit me up if you need a fully decentralized website. Hit me up if you need uh, a personal domain name for your Ethereum address, like CryptoRoots.eth. So that's my, you can just pay CryptoRoots.eth, CryptoRoots.eth. I got you. I can set one of those up for you, uh, for your Ethereum MetaMask account. Um, hit me up for the mentorships. Check out my courses. All right. So let's talk about it. DeFi, decentralized finance. I've been pushing this shit. If you've been following anything crypto, you know everybody's talking about DeFi. DeFi, in my opinion, is like the new crypto gold rush. Okay? It's the new crypto gold rush. That's the way I see it. So, there's all these protocols and tokens and yield. It's, it's so much going on. And obviously, people are in it for the money. People are doing it for the money, and there's a lot of money. You people are making 100%, 300% APY, like every 15 seconds. It's like it's insane. You can be making, you got it. You better be in DeFi if you want any form of passive income, like especially passive income that's bound to skyrocket. We'll talk about that later. But with all that being said, high risk, high high reward. So the reason there's a high reward because there's a lot of risk that people just aren't talking about. People just aren't talking about. So that's what I want to talk about. I'm not trying to sell you a pipe dream. I'm just spitting game, delivering it, just sharing my opinion. That's what this channel is about. Um, now we got to talk about the risk of joining decentralized finance. What are the risks? Or what type of ways can you lose money? What do you live? What do you need to watch out for? Okay. So we're gonna, you know. This is more crypto no notes and you know what I'm saying? So the first one we need to look out for, and this is when you're yield farming, when you're borrowing tokens, putting into another protocol, getting uh, liquidity mining from that, liquidity mining from that. So you that's called yield farming where you just, you throw in a little bit and then you just start farming yields, a bunch of starts sprouting up and that's how kind of the crypto game. So, um, Liquidation, number one, write this down, liquidation. You better watch the fuck out for liquidation, all right? What is that for people who don't know? It's when you put down, especially if you're borrowing, taking assets from a protocol, you put down collateral. Usually it's gotta be over collateralized, 150% to one, every, every protocol is different, okay? So, um, Liquidation is when the, the, the value of your collateral drops below what you've been given. So at that point, essentially, it's like you're stealing from the bank. You're stealing from the lender, the people you're borrowing from. Because all of a sudden, the value of collateral, the value of your house, in the real estate market tank, now the bank gave you more money than what the bank has. So that's why you get liquidated and then your assets sold off. Or the opposite, or the, the same but kind of opposite is that the value of what they gave you increased dramatically. So they're like, hold up, you go put down your house as collateral. They gave you, uh, well, it doesn't necessarily work with stable coins. We're going to get into that. But say crypto, the, the, what, they, what, you, what they gave you, what you borrowed, dramatically skyrockets. So it throws it off balance. So now you owe the pool more money because your, the asset of what you have went up. All right, so either your collateral can go down, the value of your collateral will go down, or the loan that you took out the, can uh, sky go up. So that's where you'll have to rebalance and to avoid being liquidated, okay? And a lot of people don't talk about this. And I encourage liquidation. I encourage paying off people's debts. I encourage paying off people's debts, especially in this crypto game. That's one of the ways I make hustles. I make my hustle. So hit me up if you want to learn how to do all that. But I encourage li to be a liquidator, liquidation bots, and whatnot. But that's what you need to watch out for, okay? Especially if you got three different protocols that you're balancing and yield farming, you need to watch out and monitor your liquidation ratios. Um, very, there's different dApps that can help you do it, InstaDApp and whatnot. But that's something you got to watch out for. And that's the, because 
that's definitely the big, biggest thing because crypto goes up and goes down so often that you're more likely to get your liquidation triggered if you're not paying attention or if you don't have the right safety checks or safe fails to go off because this shit can go off while you're asleep. You know what I'm saying? So you want to watch out for the liquidation. You want to be on deck. You always want to either have more collateral to throw on or be able to pay off your collateral uh, before it gets liquidated. So liquidation probably, I wouldn't say number one, but the most number one you need to look out for in DeFi. Now, this next concept is a bit difficult to kind of grasp, so I won't go into detail. You can hit me up for the mentorship. It's called impermanent loss. Impermanent loss. And this is when you're providing liquidity to a liquidity pool, okay? On Uniswap, Bank, a Balancer, Curve. So when you're providing liquidity to a liquidity pool, you have to provide 50 uh, one to one ratio, all right? So one Ethereum, so if you're providing uh, DAI, you gotta have one Ether, which is probably 240 something bucks, right? You gotta have 240 something DAI. So when you're supplying it, you have to supply both halves equally in order to jump in the pool. That's how they, that's how the automatic automated uh, market makers work. Okay, this is a lot. If this is new, I don't. It's, it's, it should be new. Okay, so I'm gonna do the best I can to break it down. But impermanent loss is essentially you put down two uh, two assets, right? They both have. They're both either gonna go up. They're going to go up and go down at different rates, right? So they're not just going to go 5%, say Ethereum, and then it's going to be 5%. That doesn't work that way, all right? So sometimes what happens is, is that you actually lose more money by providing it into a liquidity pool because of the ratios and the balancing of the liquidity pool that you would have been better off holding the asset just straight up and not supplying it to a liquidity pool. You would have made more money. That's essentially what impermanent loss is. It's like, yeah, you're collecting fees and you're getting uh, some income now, but if the ratio of what you, uh, your currencies go really off, you're gonna actually be losing money while uh, the other assets kind of gaining money. So you, it's, it's weird, it's this whole chart thing about you know uh, and permanent loss but that's what you need to watch out for so you need to wonder am i better off just holding this in my crypto wallet versus supplying it to a liquidity pool and taking that's where you take the permanent loss risk it's like a opportunity cost kind of there's different ways to look at it but essentially you're losing money for taking the risk of providing it into liquidity pool all right so impermanent loss well i'll probably have to do a whole nother episode on that but that's something that's like, yo, all I had to do was just wait and sit on this shit and I would have made more money. I thought supplying it to a pool and collecting fees was gonna make, no, that's not how it works because the, the different ratios and the volatility of crypto. So, and permanent loss, put that in your new crypto vocabulary, and permanent loss, okay? That's something to take into consider, okay? Uh, of why you may not be making as much money or why you're losing money, however you wanna put it. Now, I would say one of the biggest, these are all big, is smart contract risk. Smart contract risk. Yes, this technology is new. There, as much as security audits have been done on these smart contracts, you can go verify yourself. The code is open source. You got open Zeppelin. You got some of these protocols, the most trusted ones, have the highest level of security, uh, smart contract security, audit it constantly you know, to keep the system safe. But that doesn't mean that there's a really good hacker who knows the system inside out, which I'm training to be, a blockchain penetration tester. Why am I trying to hack blockchains? To make blockchains stronger. Some people are hacking blockchains just to get the money. And I don't blame them. You know, there's a lot of money on deck. If you got a half, uh, a billion and a half money in a smart contract, that can be drained in an instant, or you can pull some flash loans, and there's all types of hacks that have went on very, very sophisticated and very blockchain developers can only kind of pull this shit off. Ethereum, blockchain, computer, you know, very low level code. People who understand this hacking can really go and drain your whole protocol. And if you're yield farming, you're combining three or different protocols. 
So now you got, say for instance, if you're, if you got, you know, supplying a crypto assurance, you got your supplying uh, compounds, you're supplying insurance to somebody's compound die account, right? So now you're dealing with MakerDAO and all the MakerDAO smart contracts that pay the die and that back up the die with the CDP accounts. So if that shit can go, if that gets hacked, that's a possibility. That's not just that. If Compound gets hacked, that's another le level of risk. And if you get crypto insurance, OPYN, that's another smart contract protocol that can be hacked. So now you're realizing how much risk you're really taking. And then, oh, let's, let's not... Uh, so, smart contract risk. You're taking a risk, okay? Now, obviously, you don't want to invest more than you're willing to lose, and da 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 da. We all know these rules. But you're not going to get away with thinking that these smart contracts are completely self safe proof. They're not. They're as best as we can till we know until it gets hacked again. So, Right now, there's, it is a lot of high risk, high reward, but that's just kind of where it's at. So um, trust in these smart contracts, and especially if you're not a developer, you're taking a lot of trust into these developers. And, you know, uh, so that's, and also gas fees. Gas fees, gas fees, gas fees, man. I'm telling you, gas fees are just, you better come in the game ready to go because gas fees eat you up. And if you're pulling out a uh, curve token and supplying it to synthetics and then supplying that to balancer and then supplying that to Kyber network, these are all gas fees, dude. These are all gas fees that you have to uh, account for. And gas is expensive. Like we're not even, we're not at E2.0 yet. So you, you may just want to take a few hundred dollars and then make one transaction versus pulling out here, withdrawing here, collecting here, getting my comp here. It's like, yo, I may have just been better off chilling, investing in a liquidity pool, and just kind of chilling versus taking all this risk, spending all this gas money. Then you got liquidation risk, you gotta keep it aware. Then you got different and permanent loss if you supply. So there's all these risks that no one's talking about or very few people are really actually emphasizing. And that's what I'm gonna do. That's why I'm here on my channel. It's all nice and games and money and da da da. But when the shit goes bad, it goes bad. And that's why it's important to uh, obviously educate yourself, educate yourself, have different crypto portfolios, different you know risk management tools and strategies, and also um, do your own research. Start learning how smart contracts work. Start, you know, if you feel that insecure, that's how I learned about crypto. Is that like, yo, is this really made by the government? Is this really like who, like, and I just fell down the rabbit hole. So that's one way you can start to learn smart contracts and get in this game. If you take security seriously over your assets, you know? So gas fees, gotta keep that in mind. And may, you may be losing more money trying to make more money through gas fees just alone. Smart contract risk, look it up. So many smart contracts. Are getting have been hacked all right the dow dydx is all types of you know hacks and permanent loss are you better just holding the token are you willing to take the risk and supply it and maybe make some fees and hopefully it comes up that's that's a whole nother thing more than likely you're going to take in a permanent loss that's just the way it is uh which it doesn't make me feel safe in some ways i will we'll, i'll tell i will talk more about my investment strategy in DeFi and liquidation you got to watch the f out when the price of the, for the price of your collateral to drop or the loan goes up, you're gonna have to rebalance and uh, repay off your liquidation or you know add more collateral. Yeah, it's a lot going on. It's a lot going on. I try to keep up with the game. This da 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 da. It's exciting. It's like like I said, it's the crypto gold rush. So hopefully that paint a bit a paint a better picture of like what you're getting involved to, what type of risk, and you may just be able just better off just buying and holding versus taking all these risks and doing all these things. It's up to you. Uh, I'm just here to explain the game. Hit me up for the mentorship. I'll explain way more game. But rewind the tape and check it out. Take notes. I got love for you. Much love. Peace.